Hi, I'm Eric Jacobson Dunlop. Hi, I'm Doina Ivan. Um, so I have the honor of uh, interviewing you today, which is really wonderful. Thank you for doing this. Um, the first thing, so I, I know we want to talk about a couple of things. Um, one, you're an expert in adnexal neoplasms, and I want to talk about that. Um, but a couple of other things, you're also a fellowship director, and um, you kind of had an interesting path to pathology so, and dermatopathology. <laughs> so I want to get into all three of those things. And so first, if you could just tell me a little bit about how you got into dermatopathology um, and found yourself in Houston. So as most things in life, it's by chance and just seizing an opportunity. I graduated medical school in Romania, in Europe, and I did a full residency in allergy, immunology, and dermatology. So in my last year of residency, my husband, who was working for an American company in Romania, got offered a uh, promotion, and the condition was to move to Houston for at least one year. So we decided for the sake of his career to move, and the plan was clear. One year, two years, and we go back to Romania, where I'm going to do my, and I'm going to practice medicine and dermatology, actually. So things are not always <laughs> going the way you plan. So here we are, 19 years later, I'm still here. Uh, while in Houston, I had uh, one of my friends from a medical school was a pathology resident. So she invited me to do an observership with her. And it was fascinating that for the first time, I was, uh, I was learning that you can make a diagnosis not only using uh, uh, clinical clues, but histologic findings, which I thought it's, it's amazing. So making the long story short, I have uh, taken my USMLE's exams. I do, did a pathology re uh, residency, followed by fellowship in surgical pathology and then in dermatopathology, both in MD Anderson. And I work for MD Anderson after finishing my fellowship for now 12 years. And I'm a professor of pathology of dermatology there, and I'm also the program director for the Dermatopathology Fellowship Program. So you were, um, and I, I, I knew this about you, but you were a clinician first. Does that, do you feel like that informs your practice of dermatopathology? Absolutely, absolutely. I have to admit I'm a clinician at heart. I like the interaction with the patient. So for me, going to pathology was a little bit awkward, I have to admit, at the beginning. But doing dermatopathology, which was actually just for me, just a natural, easy way of combining my clinical dermatology mm -hmm. knowledge with the pathology, was actually giving me the opportunity to, to be a better uh, dermatopathologist. Because I do understand what a clinician, what a dermatologist wants to hear from me when I'm, uh, when I'm uh, writing a report. And uh, I better understand what their clinical findings are and how they relate with my histologic findings. So I believe having a good exposure to clinical dermatology really enhances the uh, quality of a dermatopathologist. So you, and you're a fellowship director. Um, so does that inform how you train your residents and your fellows? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think before I wanted to be a physician, which was also by chance, but I'm not going to get into that now, I, uh, I wanted to be a teacher. I always uh, dreamt about being a French teacher. Yes, I know, it's unusual, <laughs> but this is what I wanted. So um, I love teaching. I, I, this is something that really moves me. This is something that really makes me happy. I, uh, I like being in an academic center, especially because I do have trainees. And I'm trying to teach them not only dermatopathology, but I t tell them about balancing life and work. I tell them about how to find the right job and what the right job would look like you, when, you, when you see it, and uh, how do you have to learn how to look for a place where you can grow, when you can uh, get better. So uh, absolutely, that uh, makes a big difference. Um, and, and now you are uh, also an expert in adnexal neoplasms. And um, was that also by chance? Was that intentional? Did you seek that out? How did that come to be? I think it's just because somebody gave me once, maybe, maybe this is the best career advice I can give anybody. Find a niche, find a subject, find something that you like and you get better at. 
because the more you know about the subject, the better you become, and more people are seeking you as the expert, as the specialist in something. So um, I, I think this is a very important uh, thing for anybody that starts that, that starts pathology or any other or any other field of medicine to find the subject. And for me, it were an Excel tumors. I Maybe daily I see more melanocytic lesions or cutaneous mm -hmm. lymphomas that are nexal tumors, but I have just focused the, from the beginning on this subject. Also, I'm lucky being in a large cancer center that we do see a lot of these tumors and they are not so common, but we, we do have the chance to see many of these tumors and uh, we can characterize them better. Um, so they have on the, um, the IDs downstairs, they have lumper and splitter for the ASDP, and um, we talked about this earlier, but you say n now you are a lumper, but earlier you were a splitter. So tell us about your approach to adnexal neoplasms and maybe how it's changed as a, originally <laughs> being a splitter and now being a lumper. Yeah, yes, we, we talked today, and I, I thought it's a wonderful idea, whoever had an idea of uh, adding those, uh, those notes to the badges. And I think everybody that starts a career it's a splitter. You you want to you try your best to show that you know the difference between different entities. The the more you see, the more experienced you are, you realize there are actually few things that are important. If it's the tumor is malignant or is benign, if it's anything that that particular tumor may be associated with, or in the a case of adnexal tumors, is really an adnexal tumor or is a metastatic tumor resembling mm -hmm. an adnexal tumor in the skin. So these are the important questions that you have to ask yourself and to answer when you approach these lesions. Now, telling exactly which type of ductal mm -hmm. differentiation you have in the tumor and may be important, if especially for some, some of the tumors that have a higher metastatic potential, let's say, or a higher recurrence rate. But other than that, it's just an kind of academic exercise that I like to do it mm -hmm. because I'm passionate about that, but I do not think it's necessarily very important. So I'm a lumper. Okay. I, like, I actually am also a lumper. You mentioned something that is extremely relevant to real life, like just private practice that I uh, do day to day, which is the difference between is it an, a, a, a malignancy originally from the dermis or is it a MET? What is your approach? Is it like, you know, metastasis versus primary adnexal? So exp I think the problems are mostly seen in tumors that they have ductal differentiation. Mm -hmm. yeah, so right. you are wondering, it's an adenocarcinoma metastatic from breast, let's say, mm -hmm. versus an adnexal tumor that clean, uh, histologically they definitely look very similar. So there are few histologic clues that are very useful. Uh, for an anexal tumor, for example, you they have a background of more hyaline stroma, while a, a metastatic tumor doesn't have that, that type of stroma. Um, epidermal involvement is more commonly seen, or follicular involvement is commonly seen in, in uh, primary tumors. However, we, we all seen epidermotropic metastasis, mm -hmm. so you have to, to keep that, that in mind. Lymphovalent Vascular invasion is also more commonly seen with, uh, with tumors that are metastatic to the skin. There are a few other soft criteria that maybe they are not so much emphasized in the literature. So for example, the presence of passenger melanocytes in a tumor mm. tells you that that tumor actually originates either from the hair follicle or from mm. overlying epithelium instead of being a metastasis, having the melanocytes in it. And um, you can also definitely use immunohistochemical studies. and here in uh, ASDP, they gave me the chance to, uh, to have, actually I do have two of these courses discussing the <clears throat> a practical reappraisal of immunohistochemical studies in uh, diagnosis of adnexal tumors, and I'm focusing especially in, especially in telling them apart from metastatic tumors in the skin. That's great. That's a good <coughs> advertisement for your consultation session too, which <laughs> sounds excellent. Um, okay, so uh, another thing I just want to get back to as uh, a fellowship director, um, what do you see as sort of opportunities for trainees coming out and how do you see sort of the landscape of dermatopathology moving forward? It's hard to predict yeah. and uh, it's ev definitely every year is changing and I, uh, 
I believe these days it may be harder, mm -hmm. might be more difficult to find a job in the field of dermatopathology than it was when, uh, when um, I graduated. I do remember coming to the ASDP meeting and there are lots of advertisements uh, related to jobs in, available mm -hmm. in pathology, but I don't see this anymore. However, um, I think in the, in the recent years, lots of programs actually reduce the number of fellows that mm -hmm. they are taking, which I think it's, a, it's a, a, a great thing. You do not really want to have lots of graduates without having enough uh, job opportunities for them. And uh, coming from our institution, I have to admit, we don't, I don't think we ever had a problem for right. our fellows finding jobs. But um, I am uh, hoping that we are going to be able, as a society, to keep, in, uh, to keep a good balance between the number of trainees and the uh, jobs available out there. I agree 100% <laughs> with that. Um, and then I guess one, one last thing I want to ask. You're very involved with the ASDP. You've, done, you've chaired the MOC committee. Um, why do you feel like it's important to be involved in our professional society? Hmm. I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> I came for the first time to ASDP in 2003. I was a resident hoping that one day I'm going to do dermatopathology. I was just applying for dermatopathology, and I had a, an, um, a study that was accepted as a podium presentation. So my mentor, Dr. Prieto, was, uh, just told me a couple of weeks before the meeting that he will not going to be able to come with me. So mm. here I am alone coming to Chicago at my first ASDP meeting and not knowing one single person in the whole group. And I, I will always remember how strange and foreigner, and I was a foreigner, but I saw strange and odd I felt about this. And in the same time, I got there on the podium and people were very welcoming and they treated me so nice. Actually, I won the award for the best presentation that year. And uh, uh, people were inviting me to sit to them at the table, although they didn't know me. And I, I had a feeling, I, I felt home. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to explain, but this is, this is one of the, the first uh, memories I have about ASDP. So some of the people that I didn't know at the time now are my best friends, and we are really friends outside of our professional relationship. So uh, um, I, I think I grew into this, and ASDP gave me lots of opportunities to be part of, the, of different committees, to present, to have courses. And um, I, I, I think it's also very important for the ones that they are coming into dermatopathology field, for the trainees to get involved, because this is a way of connecting to, to, to another. And uh, we, we collaborate between us, and we do have, we share cases, interesting, complicated cases, we share them, and many times we, we discover this uh, relationship here in this meeting. So, Yeah, I agree with so much of what you said. I think it's our society does a great job with residents, like you say, and involving residents. And I also had a similar experience in that I came as a trainee and then continued on through. Um, and then the other thing is I think you're, you hit on spot on, we all teach each other. I mean, you're doing these consultation sessions. It's experts teaching other people who are in their area experts. So I think that's really wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to come talk with us. And, Thank you for having and, me. Yeah, no, it was really wonderful. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you.